In those years, it was easier to win the Soviet championship than a game against Iron Tigran, Gary Kasparov. Hello chess lovers, Soren here and today, on the 17th of June, on the 19th birth anniversary of the 9th world chess champion Tigran Petrosian, want to share with you a brilliant attacking game played by Petrosian himself against Hungarian chess player Paul Benko. The game was played in 1955 in Budapest. But before starting our game, would like to read what Aronian tweeted today. Tigran Petrosian would have been 90 today, an absolute mystery of a player equally gifted in all fields of chess, but mostly preferred a kind of sleepy approach just to explode when his opponents didn't expect it. Extremely competitive yet pragmatic. And now without further ado, let's get started with our game and see what happened on the board. Petrosian was playing with the white pieces opened up with d4 and Benko responded with knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. We have the Nimzo Indian defense e3, white continues his development by establishing the Rubinstein system and c5, black is instantly putting pressure on white's central d4 square. The other popular alternatives are castling kingside or b6, but in our game we have c5, a3, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, knight c6, bishop d3 and b6. Black could also castle kingside, this is the main move, but in our game we have b6. Now comes e4 and a strange decision by Paul Benko, e5. This allows white to establish a massive center and grab a space. Instead of playing e5, it was better either to play d6 or proceed with the development. But in our game we have e5 and after this simple d5 move, black is starting to face some problems. Knight a5. Now black will also bring his bishop on the a file and will start putting pressure on the c4 square. But honestly, I don't like the way black knight is placed on a5. Later, during all the game, black won't even manage to move that knight. Here comes knight f3, queen e7, white castles kingside, bishop a6, and knight h4. Now, black can't even capture on c4, because in this case, after the exchange of bishops, white has a powerful knight f5 move. And if queen f8, then f4, and black's position is simply demoralized. The queen stands on a miserable square while white has a dangerous attack. That's why after knight h4, Benko played g6, took under control of the f5 square, but instead of thinking about defending this pawn on c4, Petrosian proceeded with his attack and this time played f4. Here Benko castled queenside, but this is a bad move. Instead, it was better to accept the pawn sacrifice and capture on c4, though I have to tell you that even in this case, black is facing serious problems. In here, white has this powerful bishop h6 move with the threat of bishop g7, and if knight g4, then white can first play bishop f4, and after queen h5, play knight f3, and white is enjoying a pleasant position and has nice attacking chances. There is a miscoordination in black pieces and of course white has a compensation for the sacrificed pawn and an advantage. But I have to repeat again that this line is even better than Kies Link queenside. Now comes knight f3 though Petrosian could even capture first on e5 and then play knight f3 d6, f takes e5, d takes e5 and bishop g5. We have a very unpleasant pin and it's not quite clear how is black going to handle with it. h6, bishop h4, rook d6. Black is strengthening this knight on f6, but these are desperate attempts and black's position is totally lost. Now you can pause the video and try to find the winning move for white. Ready? In here, Iron Tigran played knight takes e5. Look at this powerful move, guys. This is allowing Petrosian to remove black's central pawn and make his center mobile. Queen takes e5 was played bishop g3, queen e7, and this time we have e5. Of course, Petrosian is not even paying attention to the rook. Rook d7 and rook takes f6. Black's position is totally lost. At this point, Benko could already resign, but he kept on making moves. h5, h4, not allowing any possible counterplay. Bishop b7, this time we have queen a4. Rook g8, 
like rook is hurrying to strengthen the pawn on f7 but no way out you know rook g7 this time we have d6 look at this powerful central pawns guys queen d8 and this time we have e6 this is a fantastic position right white pawns have already reached the sixth rank and they are simply monsters rook takes d6 another desperate move well the thing is that you can't capture on e6 in view of this rook f8 threat that's why in our game we have rook takes d6 but after bishop takes d6 finally we have a resignation if queen takes d6 then e takes f7 is coming there is no way to stop that pawn you know if queen f8 this time queen e8 check is coming that's why Understanding that his position is hopeless after bishop takes d6, Paul Benko resigned. A brilliant game with which Petrosian reminded us once again that the pawns are the soul of chess. In the end, as usual, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find that winning move for black. I will wait for your deflective move in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you. Feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video.